As the members of the Bear Divide Hotshots describe indicator training, follow along with the decision-making model in your student workbook. Well, the, uh, we started the indicator training probably in the year 2000, and uh, one of the reasons it came to be was because uh, we started to get a lot more um, movement within the crew. In the old days, the crews were eight, nine years, six, seven year uh, temporary firefighters, but with the apprenticeship program, and the movement we're getting in the agency, we're starting to see only maybe one or two years within the crew. So what I wanted to do was to get these folks up to speed right away. We, you know, we have, we're challenged to get them up and meet uh, the, the synergy within the crew, the cohesion within the crew. Uh, and along with that, how do we get them ready to go to like region three in two weeks and start fighting fire? You know, how, how, how do they prepare themselves or how do we prepare them? So I started thinking about it, and one of the things, not only, not only myself, but with the overhead on the crew, we kind of thought about, um, you know, SA is one of the, the big factors. You know, how do we get them up to speed to recognize the SA out there? How do we teach them to, to recognize the fires talking to them, or the, or, or the fire ground? And what we, we call it battlefield indicators, but it's the fire ground indicators. How do we get them to recognize what's going on around them, not just fire behavior indicators, weather indicators, topography indicators, but everything. You know, what's, what's the big picture, you know? So you know, one of the things was listen to the radio, uh, visually look at everything that's going on around you. Um, and it's not only what's happening today, but what's happening this morning and what happened the previous day or even the previous week. So there, there can be some historical stuff there. So basically it's just taking all the information around you and, and finding a way or giving them a tool or giving them a skill to recognize all that stuff and help help develop those slides quicker but with quality. Uh, it's something that I think the crews all do. It's nothing new. It's just that we've attached a concept to it. Uh, we put a name to it uh, so that they so that they key on it a lot quicker. So so what we do is we include in the 80 hour training and then we, we use it every day in the eight hour in our 80 hour training we go back and relate to it. Uh, whether we're doing like uh, um, entrapment avoidance stuff or safety and mitigation stuff, sand table exercises or any video exercises, we say, well, what were the indicators in there? You know, not only the fire behavior indicators, but all the indicators to led you to believe what the outcome might be or to plan for the outcome. What, what I think it is, it's, uh, it's like enhanced situation awareness and we want it to enhance that situation awareness to make quicker decisions, to help with the decision making process basically putting everybody on the wide side of the, uh, the time wedge that you have. We don't want them here on the, on the narrow side of the time wedge. We want to keep everybody here on the wide, set, wide side of the time wedge. And we don't believe that it's all luck. We think that you know, chance favors the prepared firefighter. So if you're always prepared using with good SA, then you're always going to be, or most of the time, be on the wide side of the time wedge. And that's, that's our goal, to so always be there. So you know, if an opportunity arises, um, we can either go in and get something because we're, we've made ourselves more aware or we can get out a lot quicker because we made ourselves more aware. So it's not just luck. You know, we put, that, we put chance on our side, on our favor. We'll look up, look down, look around. We use all those indicators, but we also go outside of that and use other indicators. Like we use indicators from an uh, operational uh, standpoint, tactical standpoint, or logistical standpoint. So let's say we're listening to the radio, we're listening to all the different frequencies out there. Maybe something's going on in another division. Uh, let's say it's 10 o'clock in the morning and we hear that they're getting spots. Well, that should indicate to us that something's going to change in our division. There's a potential we're going to get spots. So we start preparing a lot sooner than later. Or let's say that we're trying to uh, meet an objective for that operational period, you know, based on the IAP or something we came up with t uh, tactically. Uh, it, might, it might entail that we have to have air support or something for it or some other resources for it. Well, we might hear something uh, go on in another division if we're paying attention. You know, this is the whole fire ground we're paying attention to now. We might hear something in another division that tells us, well, we might not meet this objective now. Well, or it might be a safety thing. It might be a safety, safety alert thing or indicator thing where we might have to back out or something or slow down or reevaluate. So it, help, it helps us to constantly reevaluate what's going on, helps us with our trigger points, uh, and, it, and it helps us to, to anticipate a lot sooner than later. You know, every piece of, every 50 feet or 100 feet of fire, uh, of fire on the ground is a whole new environment that you're moving through. You know, if you're going through this 100 feet, it could be in flat ground on the drainage. Next 100 feet can be on a slope. 
that's a whole new environment once you go to that slope. So there's a lot of slide building you can do on every 100 feet of line that you're going through, that you're working in. Fire behavior wise, weather wise, topography wise, and as far as tactics and strategy. You know, how is, how is this, how is everything around me gonna affect what I'm doing here right now? Well, when we go through the AR process, we go through the outline AR process, but, when we, but at, at some point in time there, when we talk about why did it happen, then we, then we also talk about, well, what led up to this happening? What were the things out there, what were the indicators out there on the fire ground that told you this was gonna happen? And then once, you, once we figured out what those were, we try to remember them and we key in on them, we focus in on them to help develop those quality slides. So the next time that situation comes up, they, they see it sooner, so it keeps us on this side of the time wedge, I mean on the decision making time wedge instead of over here. So you're not being reactionary, you're being more proactive. When it was taught to us, a lot of the times I think um, people have, they're, they're more distracted by the title, trying to figure out what that means, instead of listening to the concept and, and saying to yourself, oh, okay, so all they're really saying is you're looking at your surroundings, putting yourself in tune with your environment, and trying to predict certain outcomes whether it involves you or not. And for the most part, you do it on a daily basis. Like when you drive to work, you are focused on the lane, you're focused on your speed, you're focused on your vehicles aside from you, behind you, you're looking at the individual driving the vehicle next to you, you see a female putting on makeup, you see a person, another person on a cell phone distracted, you see a bunch of distractions going on around you as they're driving, you know, a two-ton vehicle. <laughs> so, and you're, you know, you're all on the same roadway and mentally all drivers on the road are putting all these images in their head. And for the most part, I think most people are capturing these images, making a little slideshow, you know, as they say in the battlefield indicators, and you're creating a, a sense of the hazards around you. And um, I think the only difference is, is that people on uh, everyday uh, actions don't take those images and those hazards and give themselves an out. And, um, and like I do now with all this training, that was right off the bat, the first thing that I started realizing I always do now is when I drive, I imagine, okay, if an accident were to happen, this person swerved and hit that person that wasn't even paying attention to, to them, where would I go? What would be my next move? And it's kind of all like a chess game. The battlefield indicators all basically saying that you need to look at what you have and make not only the next move, but possibly the next three or four moves. And, and that's kind of how I see it. So I think where we lack experience, we have to make up in training and it's just one more process that helps get people, you know, to that point faster, I, I think. They're a step ahead of the game all the time when they're hearing things. They're kind of making contingency plans for themselves, um, just for planning purposes. Um, you know, they uh, the the overhead on the crew can be out scouting and coming up with plans, and, and they can hear options going back and forth. Um, they hear us talking. Um, you know, we're out scouting something. They hear us talking about you know having a window of opportunity to burn something or do something like that. First thing they're going to be doing that's an indicator to them. They need to will be looking at their burn equipment. They're going to be checking all their stuff. It kind of keeps them, you know, that heightened level of preparedness where, all right, they're talking burning here, you know, or we're talking about a whole lot of uh, direct hand line and stuff. You know, they're going to start um, back in their mind. That's an indicator, you know, the saw equipment. We're going to have to bring extra Domar out. Um, we need to build a fourth saw team, that kind of thing.
we're all here together. We're all brothers and sisters, and you know, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt or anything like that. So you know, I, I'm usually very, very verbal about stuff. You know, if I see something I don't like, I'm gonna say something about it. Or if I see something that's you know, maybe unsafe, I'd be like, hey, why don't you try it this way? You know, why don't you you know just lay it out there. And if they tell me to shut up, then they tell me to shut up. But why not throw the idea out there? Maybe it's a good idea. You know. Well, the fire, fire uh, line indicators are very important because, you know, situation awareness is, to me, it's, it's number one to try to um, anticipate and prepare yourself for worst case scenario or prepare yourself for what's going to happen. And I think fire line indicators um, is just a way of increasing that situation awareness. And, you know, um, chance favors the prepared firefighter or the prepared mine. So, um, if you're always on that wide end of the of the time wedge, you're always going to be in your safe zone. So, um, what we do in the crew is we, we try to keep ourselves in that fat end of the time wedge. Always have a plan going. Take all the uh, situation awareness and indicators into consideration and in formulating a plan. Having a backup plan, a plan you know A, B, and C, and if it happens that maybe due to, due to time or fire behavior that we're not able to carry out that plan and as the time wedge gets shorter, we can maybe fall into something else and kind of stay on that, that side of the time wedge. So we, our cohesion as a crew, we built the same as a family. And since I've been here, we've never had a problem with uh, the decisions, they, they'll come to us and say, this is why we're choosing this decision, and say this is the way it's gonna be, and that's, that's it. We have a mind to speak, and if our decision isn't logical to them, they'll give us the logic, and then we'll, we'll try to give a logic, and then usually try to come together on a mutual basis. And we still have the chain of command, you know, the supervisors, and, and, but it works out real good. That falls back to that, that 10 standard of firefighting or fight fire aggressively, but provide for safety first. Well, I think there's different levels of aggressiveness. And in the old days, and, and this is probably nothing new, this is stuff we were probably taught in the old days. Sometimes you gotta take an aggressive, you gotta take an aggressive approach or be aggressive when you see a situation that presents itself to take care of that situation. And that puts us on this side of the time wedge. And that's why I said that's what I was meaning earlier by chance favors the prepared firefighter. It's not only to back out of something, but maybe to go get something too, provided it's safe enough to do so. And there's times that I, I think not, I've seen other folks or I've seen maybe like teams or resources not go get something when they had the chance to get it because it was safe at the time and they waited too long and then it became into a, a, a situation where it wasn't safe and then they were reacting to it and then they were trying to get it. So it put them on the wrong side of the time wedge. Instead of going and getting it when they should have, they waited too long and then it, they became more reactionary. So that, that wasn't fighting fire aggressively. You know, in my, in my mind, they should have fought fire aggressively when they had the chance or when the, op, when the, when the opportunity presented itself. Yeah, every, every 50 feet of fire line is a different fire environment. You know, you have topography changes, you have feel type changes, aspect, so. Whenever we're on the fire line and, 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 and we're cutting line and we're sticking with a certain tactic, we're always constantly um, in our heads re-evaluating re the tactics we're doing. Are they matching up with the fire behavior? Are they working? Um, when we get into this type of area, like if we notice, yeah, we're, 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 it's, it's into the brush and it's going up slope and it's starting to get in with a mixed timber and starting to do a field type change. You know, are we going to have to adjust our tactics a little bit, you know? Um, are we getting a little bit more rollout now to where we might have to back off, rethink things a little bit, slow it down, and um, adjust our tactics to what's going on, so. You might, you, might not, you, might, you might get lucky, but who wants to get lucky? You know, you, you don't want to get lucky. You want to be safe. That's, that, I think that's 
most important thing is being safe. Because I don't care. I love this job. I love fighting fire. But if it's unsafe, I ain't going to do it. If there's ever a day that I feel that, you know what, this is unsafe. Yeah, of course there's that, there's that margin of danger. But if that increases to a point where I feel like this is stupid, I ain't going to do it anymore. And that's, Battlefield Indicators makes it so that you're not going to do anything stupid, pretty much. So my goal was, or our intent was, to get these folks up to speed. So when we leave here, we're ready to fight fire, like now, as a hotshot crew, to be ready as a Type 1 hotshot crew. That was our intent. Uh, so this helps get everyone on the same page sooner. And this helps, this helps us as we're going out, and let's say we're starting to get to IA fires in Region 3 or go to fires in Region 3, they start using this concept, and it brings everybody closer, or, or it, puts us, it brings us uh, sooner to, co to a cohesive crew, synergy-wise. They're all on the same page, because now they're all thinking about, they're all, they're all working, and they're utilizing and thinking about this concept. So when I go through the briefings, or we go through, uh, talk about the IAP, they're already in their mind thinking for themselves. What do I need to do to prepare for this day? Or what do I need to do to prepare myself for this day? Stuff like that. So it goes down to the lowest common denominator. That's the first year firefighter. Were you able to tie the processes of the decision-making model into the discussions on indicator training? As Mike said, most people are already doing this. However, Bear Divide has managed to integrate this into the culture of their crew at all levels.